And it was literally got home from my day job, stayed up till midnight, 1 a.m., researching, writing the business plan. And it was a manifesto. There was probably <laughs> 100 pages. Wow. But, you know, my goal was to raise a bunch of money because I wanted to hire the best people in the business. I wanted to launch this incredible brand that I dreamed about and had all these plans. And I knew that it was going to start with the, with the business plan itself. I took it a step further, and I would encourage people, if they don't feel that their strength is writing and putting together a good business plan, to call a professional and hire a professional, maybe to polish up what they've started. So like I said, I'm, I spent almost six, year, six months on that business plan. Wow. I hired a business plan writer, gave him all my content, much like you got your book, you know, some of that handed to you, right? right. Gave him all my content and said, look, I need to raise $5 million with this. I need the best you got. And we actually, we raised $3 million in the first round. Wow. So I paid $5,000 for this business plan writer to take what I'd already done, seemed like a lot of money, to really make it have all the bells and whistles. We raised, we got a $5 million commitment. At the end of the story, we'd raised over $11 million. That's tremendous. And that's another lesson is knowing when to ask for help. Yeah. You did all your due diligence, which was awesome, but then you gave it to someone who could really polish it with finesse and get it into the shape it needed to be to get you where you needed to be for your next step of, of pitching and getting money. Yeah, I think it's getting your ego out of the way too. I mean, like you said, you've got these the, – every business person has the best new idea, the revolutionary – Put your ego aside for a minute and realize that, you know, you should get a second perspective and an opinion and maybe even a different writer, et cetera, but, but not get in your own way, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, any advice for startups in Orange County? It seems like you've been in the heart of it for a while. Is there still something new out there that we can start in Orange County? Or are you seeing something right now that you really are excited about? You know, I really can't answer that question because as a journalist I have to stay objective so yeah. I can't infiltrate my opinion into the ecosystem all I can do is witness observe and document um, I have seen some really amazing companies I can tell you what I've written about yeah uh, Who, who's on your website right now you're really excited about yeah there's a great company called crypto fuse and they've created a hardware device sort of like what square has done for retail uh-huh and they're enabling blockchain transactions to be done offline okay so right now blockchain is all online and so let's say though you're on a you're on an air, airline flight and you want to get a drink and you have some cryptocurrency that you want to use to pay for it right but there's no wi-fi on this particular flight so you can't get a drink but with the, if you have their device and the airline also has the, the matching piece of their device you would take this hardware and insert it and that would enable the transaction to be done offline. Right. Now, later when the flight lands, the stewardess or the like would, would need to go online where there's Wi-Fi and document the transaction in the blockchain because mm -hmm. it is a ledger. Okay. But it's alleviating sort of that pressure point. And not only have they created the hardware, they've also created their own form of cryptocurrency. Hmm. And they've created an an a cryptocurrency exchange so that this currency can be, you know, bought and sold. Yeah. So what they're doing is, is very unique and, you know, trying to alleviate a, a pressure point and trying to do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. If you listen to Metzler, he, he talks about being the pick and shovel of transactions. He doesn't want to invent or invest in the cryptocurrency. He wants to invest in the pick and the shovel. So in this case, it would be that hardware that they both need to make the transaction, right? So, David, if you're listening, CryptoFuse. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I want it. So, I spend a lot of time on Instagram, and I'm a car lover, which a lot of people know that I race off road cars. And I follow a uh, the guy's name is Manny Koshbin. He's an Orange County guy, big collector of cars, and I was kind of geeking out on his stuff. But I happened to notice in his um, in his bio, he has a company. His inst the Instagram site, and I don't know Manny at all. So Manny, this is for you, buddy. <laughs> His Instagram site for this company has is Trifusel, T R Y F U Z U L, and I thought, what is that? And what is really cool about this is basically you're hiring local people through his program to do things that you can't do. And he gives a really great example because he's in real estate. So his example is, let's say that you own some property in Montana and you've got renters there, and you know you can't get to Montana to look at your property, you hire somebody through this app 
that lives in Montana that can drive by your rental property and go, hey, yeah, the place looks great. The trash has been taken out. The grass is cut, whatever. Whatever it is that you need somewhere else, you can hire somebody on the spot through this program on your phone. I love that. I had a friend in the Bay Area who had bought a condo in Seattle and lived there for a stretch and then moved back to the Bay Area but rented her condo out. And yeah. she could have used this. It would have helped her out so much. Right? I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking where I live. Who can hire me? What can I do for people around my house? I'll make a couple bucks that way. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I understand how uh, you have to be politically correct about opinions and what's happening in Orange County. I've been throwing this at my guests recently. It's a out-of-the-blue question. What is it right now that you are personally passionate about in your life, or maybe you're geeking out on something on a micro level, if it's maybe this new pen, or maybe it's going to be that wine I gave you today from Monte <laughs> Um, What is it that you're really geeking out, out about or that you're passionate about today in your life? Well, um, as much as I love wine, I love yoga even more. Mm -hmm. And something else I did was in 2013, I started a yoga teacher training program in San Francisco. And it was a fabulous program. The teachers were great. I learned so much. And I started teaching yoga shortly after that, but then had to stop teaching uh, due to various jobs and work commitments. But I do yoga a lot as my own practice, mm -hmm. which dovetails with meditation and journaling and the rest of my spiritual practice. So I, if there were more hours in the day, I would try to do more yoga. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, there you have it. And so, then I would have a glass of wine. Uh, <laughs> cap the day off. So how can our listeners find you or where, they, where can they get more information about you and, and your website? Yeah, so my website is called OC Startups Now. It's www.ocstartupsnow.com. Yeah, great. And then do you any social media handles for you or, or just the website? Twitter is at OC Startups Now, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Perfect. And then I also created a website around uh, the gratitude from the heart procedure, and that is called Deirdre's Hearts. It's www.deirdreshearts.org. And eventually I would like to transform that into an official 501c3 nonprofit so I can start fundraising and start helping individuals who right. have medical bills that they might not be able to afford, especially in the heart area. But for now, if you go to the website, you can donate to the American Heart Association. That w which is great. We really appreciate that. They're a great organization and love what they're doing over there. Well, there you have it. There's um, an interesting both personal and professional uh, answers, yes, uh, scenarios for you to follow and we really appreciate you coming on the air today and sharing your story both personal and professionally and we wish you the best of luck in your your website and your business well thank you so much and i wish you the best of luck on your business and your podcast we're having a good time <laughs> over here so thank you so much all right well thank you for tuning into that interview i you know it's just so fascinating the things that some of us go through as human beings and to listen to her story about the SVT and her willingness to go in and have a procedure done to correct that. It's just amazing to me. I've had a couple of really minor uh, medical things that I've done recently, as simple as even giving blood, and I just don't want to go do it. So looking at her story or hearing her story and what she had to make a decision, um, it's just pretty amazing. So I really appreciate her story on, on our podcast today, and hopefully we've all learned something. As always, uh, in close of the show, I like to give a couple of tidbits on some things that I'm always thinking about. And this week, I just want to talk about do what you say and say what you do. And what's so interesting about that statement is I, when I was in my tequila business, we've had a lot of success in the national account world. And I had the owner of a big brand out of Breckenridge reach out to me. And he said, Jim, I just I know your story, I know your brand, and I know that you've had the ability to be in a lot of national accounts. How do you do that? And I said, you know, I don't want you to overthink this, and I don't want to pretend like I have this great math equation or a very complex way of being successful in that world. I said, it's as simple as doing what you say, saying what you do. And what I mean by that is when you go and call on these people, the customers, whether you're in sales or any other organization, when you call on somebody and you commit to something, follow through on that. And it's amazing how many times I've heard customers say to me, wow, nobody ever calls me back. Wow, nobody ever shows up again after they've made the sale. Wow, you really are going to do that and you did it. So it's as simple as doing what you say and you 
certainly see the results from that. I know that I have, and I know that that was part of my success. We had landed the Landry's account, and if you don't know Landry's, look them up, but they're one of the largest privately held restaurant groups in the United States. At the time, they had, I don't know, 500 locations total, Um, and we were good partners of them, and what it really came down to is just following through on our word. So that's my two tidbits for you this week. As always, I like to bring up my mentoring partner, David Meltzer, and he talks about having more than enough and how we should spend a few minutes each day reflecting on what we have and how much of that that we do have. And I think you'd be surprised uh, how much you've been blessed and what you've done. As Again, as I'm looking out my window, watching my daughter ride around on the street, having a good time. By the way, we're in a coal sack, so it's very safe. Um, I just know that I've got a lot, and I'm thankful for that. And what it all comes down to me is my belief since I was young, and that is what you believe is what you will achieve. Thank you, Mark Victor Hansen, for that, all the way dating back to 1983 is when I first heard that. So tune in. Thank you for subscribing. If you've enjoyed this interview and what we're doing here, please share us. Uh, We're on iTunes. The answer is yes. You can find this podcast on our website. You can find me in social media, especially Instagram. I'm very active at, and that is at Jim Riley Racing. And I have also another site, if you like what's happening in my Spartan world, it is at Spartan Strong at 50. So I'd love to hear from you. And again, thanks for tuning in.